few bits, Steve, from old Yorkshire Geek, and a bit of Star Trek news on this fine Saturday, November the 9th. Uh, I had to check. Yes, I did. Um, apparently, the Star Trek reboot movie is going to be set before Enterprise. Star Trek Enterprise, not the USS Enterprise. Uh, this is according to uh, Screen Rant and Puck. But uh, before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment, hit the notification bell if you subscribed already, uh, and all that stuff. Explore the description for various links for stuff, merch, Patreon, websites, uh, my books, stuff like that. Uh, right, so, off we go. Let's have a read of this article, shall we? Right, here's the article in question. Uh, Star Trek reboot movie is a pre-Enterprise origin story. New report reveals script and filming status. And there's Chris Pine and Zoe Saldana in the terrible J.J. Abrams movies. Although Star Trek Beyond were okay, but it wasn't without problems. <laughs> anyway, uh, Matthew Biggin reports. Uh, a new Star Trek reboot movie set to be based in a pre-Enterprise era has received an update on its script and filming status. Uh, the Star Trek franchise is among the most popular and successful media franchises of all time and so far has spanned 12 television series and 13 feature films. I've on to count them up. <laughs> Original series, animated series, TNG, DS9, Voyager, Enterprise, um, Discovery, Picard, Strange New Worlds, um, what else have we had? Um, Prodigy, Lower Decks. That's that's eleven. That's eleven. Have I missed one out? What's the twelfth? I've missed one out somewhere. What have I missed out? Oh, they're counting the short tricks. Maybe that could be twelve to count the short tricks. Yeah, Discovery, Strange New Worlds. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. I was thinking they might have missed out the animated series, the original animated series, but apparently they haven't. I've missed one out somewhere. Anyway, spanned 12 television series and 13 feature films, with the most recent being 2016 Star Trek Beyond uh, in movies. Uh, the television film Star Trek Section 31, which nobody wants to see, looks bloody awful, starring Michelle Yeoh, is set for a 2025 release. But eight years since a the theatrical movie release, the latest reboot update has been highly, has been highly anticipated. Right, per reports in Puck, which I did try checking, but for some reason, whenever you go to Puck, we'll show it, I'll show it, it's here, it's here, hang on, where are we? Uh, there we go. You go to Puck, and then you, all you get is that. It fades out. And then there it says, start your free trial today. It, there, there's actually a box that came up saying, get one free article, put your email address in. So I put an email address in and verified it when I got the, the email from them. But it still wouldn't let me read it. It just says, start your free trial today. So that's a lot of bollocks, isn't it? So you can't read the article. So I can't check it, uh, unfortunately. But anyway. So thanks, Puck, and Matthew Baloney. That's living up to your bloody name. Anyway, per reports in Puck, Paramount is set to develop the project. A lot of P's in there. Per reports in Puck, Paramount is set to develop the project. <laughs> and details about the writer and director have been released. Simon Kimberg, that, you know, omnipresent man, it seems, who is attached to develop the Star Wars franchise with Disney, will first take charge. Take charge. Will first take charge of shepherding the Star Trek reboot. That's interesting in itself. And will produce the untitled movie with a script penned by Seth Graham Smith and helmed by Andor and Black Mirror director Toby Haynes. The movie is currently in pre-production and could begin filming in the first half of 2025. Nay, mid 2025. Uh, and there's some images from the films. The JJ films. The Star Trek reboot has a lot resting on its shoulders, with Star Trek Beyond released almost a decade ago and only being a modest box office success. Since then, the franchise has expanded its TV projects, which have seen varying degrees of success, but the time is right for the franchise to become a blockbuster force once again. Has it ever been a blockbuster, though? In movies? I don't think it has. Um, anyway, they've been popular with you know science fiction fans, but I don't think they've ever been classed as a blockbuster. 
not like Star Wars or Jurassic Park or them sort of films. Anyway, expectations will be high and the choice to do an origin story is a bold one uh, that could either be hugely successful or very disastrous. But is it an origin story? I don't understand what they're saying origin story for. Anyway, a pre-enterprise story moves the franchise away from the over-reliance on legacy characters uh, and allows the filmmakers a clean slate to put their mark on the world in a way that respects the source material whilst, I hate that word, while still remaining fresh, original and interesting. It also sets the franchise up for a newer and younger audience that might not be familiar with the source material that has come before a newer and younger. You know what that means, you know, modern day. But anyway, um, while they're showing the outrageous O'Connor, which I always pronounced O'Connor for some reason, but uh, Billy Campbell. Anyway, existing franchises tend to already have a strong audience pre-coded into them, which makes them more likely... I don't know why they're showing that. What's that got to do with this? I don't know. Which makes them more likely to return to success at the box office, but this isn't always the case. I, says whoever wrote it, I've forgotten already, feel like a movie reboot is riskier given that there is less margin for error than with serialised storytelling of TV shows. So a lot will depend on how good the script is, how focused the creative team is. Star Trek is a franchise with a lot of moving parts and finding a way, uh, I can't speak today, and finding a way to make this movie fit into the franchise in, in the right way will be crucial. Source puck, which you can't read unless you sign up. And I'm not bloody signing up. I'm not going through a paywall. You can shite. I'm, I'm angry today, by the way. Um... Not just because of this, uh, other reasons as well. But anyway. Um, yeah, um, but who's saying it's a pre enterprise era film? Is that in this Puck article, which you can't read unless you sign up? I don't know, because I'm not signing up, so... Um, I don't know, so... But why do we need a pre enterprise origin story? Enterprise is the origin story. What are we going to learn from before that? Because before that, I come to Enterprise, Earth were just pooling about in its own backyard with ships that couldn't go beyond warp three-ish. Um, the, the first ship that we saw were in that could go warp four uh, was the... Um, um, I can never bloody remember the name of it. Um, the USS um, Franklin. was the USS Franklin that we saw in Star Trek Beyond, uh, which was a warp four NX-class ship, although it wasn't... It was similar to the Enterprise NX-01, but obviously it must have come before that. Um, and it had a motorbike on it for some reason, but anyway. Um, so is it going to be about that? But like I said, before that, Starfleet, such as it was, I think Starfleet was still quite new when Enterprise started, because um, Earth didn't really have a Starfleet. As I said, we were pootling about in our own backyard, and it was because of the Enterprise the NX-01, the Earth finally actually went out deeper into space. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Uh, although there were some, you know, colonisers, uh, that word, but you know what I mean, the co people, colonists, that went out sort of like earlier than the, uh, you know, the warp two, three, four era, but it took them a long time to get there and the colonies were essentially became self-sufficient or whatever, or died out. But anyway, so I don't know, I don't know. Is it about the setting up of the of Starfleet, of the Starfleet? I have no idea. Why do we need it? We don't. We don't need it. But anyway, whatever. So there we go. But I come to Puck, I'm guessing it's a pre-Enterprise era origin story. I don't care. I don't care. I mean, that's sort of a mood today. I don't care. I don't care about that. I don't care about Section 31. Definitely don't care about Star Trek Starfleet Academy. I care about Star Trek Legacy, which they're not going to make. Anyway, but even then, I'm not that bothered about that. I'd like to see it, but I'm not that bothered about it. Uh, because Star Trek Picard Season 3 were okay. I don't think it was as good as everybody tried to make out it was. But it were okay. It was the best of the new Star Treks, um, pretty much. But anyway, so there we go. So we'll leave it there. By the way, sorry about Michael Gary Baldy being there. <laughs> he can't see him. Uh, there he is. Um, I'm just re-watching my Babylon 5s uh, for a video that I will f eventually get round to. 
Uh, so I just paused it. I thought, oh, I'll not put another picture up. We'll just have Michael Garibaldi there looking at us. <laughs> so anyway. Right, and there have a few videos to record today. So we'll be looking at Michael Garibaldi for a few videos. But anyway, whatever. Right, we'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see you there.